Please bow with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for everything you've done for us. If you would, think for just a minute. Let your mind imagine that you go home this afternoon and you see on, you pull up, you watch CNN or Fox News and this little crawl across the bottom of the screen mentions something about a disease that has been identified on the East Coast. You don't think about it much, go about your business today. Tomorrow you hear a little bit more about it. And on Tuesday of next week, it starts to make front page news because this disease is spreading. There's no cure for it. Um, by Wednesday, the government is now fully engaged as this disease is spreading across the country, killing people. By next weekend, the government is putting out call for private, for scientists in private industry to start helping to come up with a solution, a cure. Now there are thousands of people dying every day. And by the middle of the following week, everyone is scared to leave their house. This disease is so contagious, you don't want to take a risk that you're going to pick it up from someone. Our economy starts to shut down. And then you see on the news that the scientists believe they have identified the cause of the, of the disease and that they have figured out that there's an antibody in some people's blood that can be taken and made into a cure for the disease. And so the government puts out an all-out effort. They're going to start asking everyone to have their blood tested to see if they have this antibody that can be used to produce the needed cure for this disease. And it takes weeks But a month from now, you hear a knock on your door, and you see a person there in, in the garb of, that people use to keep from getting contagious diseases, and it's time for your family to be tested. And as everyone's blood is drawn, and they can do the test right there on the site, you see the three or four people who are there starting to talk excitedly. Finally, one of them comes to you and says, your son or your daughter has the antibody that we need. Do we have your permission? And being a person who would want to help, you want to say yes. But the next words out of their mind, out of their mouth is this. Now, before you say anything, understand, we need all of his blood. Now, are you all in? You know, Steve has been preaching recently about the importance of discipleship. And several times as he was preaching, he used this phrase. I don't know if you heard it or not, but he used this phrase, are you all in? That part of being a disciple isn't part-time, it isn't sometime, it's all the time. It's everything about who we are and what we do. I'd like to make some observations this morning, and we'll get the negative stuff out of the way first. But you know, it seems to me that Consistent participation in our Bible classes and coming back to worship on Sunday nights has kind of become passe with us. I can remember uh, a time when these things held a 
high degree of importance in our lives. I'd also like for you to remember several weeks ago when school started and Steve asked all of our young people to come stand on the stage. I want you to pull that picture up in your mind of how many were up here. And then I want to tell you that we have some Bible classes where we have two grades put together that we might have one or two children in those Bible classes. We have a couple of those. You know, in times past, the fellowship of the churches of Christ was known as a people who knew their Bibles. But I don't know about you, but I don't hear that much anymore. And I wonder if it could be because we don't covet Bible study and worship time as we once did. Our intent today is not to be negative, but it is to challenge and to encourage. Steve preached last week about Barnabas and as he was reading there in Acts chapter 11, the, the phrase at the end of verse 23 caught my attention. We're in talking about uh, the church in Antioch. When he arrived, when Barnabas arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them to remain true to the Lord with all their heart. You know, Luke could have just said he encouraged them to remain true to the Lord. But he added, remain true to the Lord with all their heart. And that's what being a disciple is. It's an all-in thing. Let's take a look for just a minute about some reasons that maybe we don't participate in Bible class of classes and worship opportunities offered by the church in a consistent manner. Sometimes our jobs prevent us from being here. We have scheduling conflicts. Some people have health issues that just don't allow them the kind of mobility that they would like to have. There may be some of us who are involved in spiritual activities that have greater value than being here. Some may feel that the value they receive by being here is not worth their time invested. And I don't know about you, but for a congregation north side's uh, size, I think we have some pretty strong Bible class teachers who uh, would make it worth people's time. There are also people who have family struggles. Uh, maybe uh, children who have special needs. Maybe it's a single mom or uh, a spouse whose husband or wife is not spiritually strong and they are carrying the weight um, of the spiritual leadership for the family there may this is this isn't on the list but there may be some who don't come because they'd like to be here but they're just the type of person who doesn't like to be called on to read a scripture or to answer a question or to make a comment and I think most of our, for the most part, our Bible class teachers are sensitive to that. And then there are those who just don't really see the need or the advantage in being here. And I guess that's the group I'd like to, to focus on this morning. First of all, let's make some stipulations from Scripture. Um... There are no thou shouts about Bible class. There are uh, no approved examples in the early church of the early church meeting for Bible classes. And there are no inferences we can draw from Scripture that can bind upon us consistent participation in Bible classes. Having said that, I'd like to take a step back and look at the broader picture, though. 
And let's think about what Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18 when he says, But grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, obviously, we, we all have an individual responsibility to grow in our knowledge of Christ and to grow in the grace of Christ. But I'm convinced that one of the reasons God put us together in a church, in a community of believers, in a, in a fellowship, is so that we can help one another grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord. I'd also like for you to think about the fact that God has instituted elders who have spiritual authority and spiritual responsibility over each member of a congregation of the Lord's church. Our elders have set times and places for us to meet in the program of work and worship that will take place. And so I would ask you the broader question. And that is, as a member of the Lord's flock in this place, do I willingly submit myself to the authority of our elders who have responsibility to watch over our souls? But I'd really like to spend most of our time this morning making the case for why faithful participation in Bible classes and returning every time we can is important. First of all, it helps my faith to grow. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, Paul said, Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You can look in through, from Genesis to Revelation, and there's no other place in Scripture that tells us, here's how you get faith. You know, we can be encouraged by one another's faith. We can be uplifted we can be challenged by one another's faith, but we cannot get faith from each other. There is only one source for faith in our life, and that is the Word of God. Now, I'm convinced that that means that initial faith that brings us into relationship with Christ, but it also applies to ongoing growth, maturity, perfection of our faith. Secondly, it hones my discipleship. Proverbs 27, 17 says, As iron sharpens iron, so, man sharpens so one man sharpens another. You know, that's one of the interesting things about the dynamics of a Bible class. When you and I study individually, privately, in our own homes, other than being able to read commentaries or have other resources that help to broaden our thinking, we're really pretty much on our own. And whatever level of knowledge we have, we're going to be limited to that. But when you put a group of people in a classroom and open up the Word of God and let people start making comments if they want to and ask questions, it's amazing how quickly the level of knowledge that we have can broaden. We start thinking about things that maybe we've never even considered before. We look at a passage and said, I, have no, I had no idea that's what that was saying. And folks, we'd never get there if it weren't for listening to other people in a public setting. Thirdly, Bible study is a continuous endeavor of the disciple of Jesus Christ. James 1, verse 25, But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it will be blessed in what he does. Our Bible classes are set up to help us ensure that we continue looking into the perfect law that gives freedom. That we don't get to a point in our lives where we remove ourselves from the word of God completely. <clears throat> Thirdly, or fourthly, participating in Bible classes offered by the church is kingdom-centric. And it's 
always been interesting to me in Acts chapter 1 when Luke is explaining that brief period of time that Jesus had between the time he ascended, uh, between the time he was resurrected and the time he ascended. And in verse 3 of Acts 1, Luke records for us what Jesus spent his time talking to his apostles about in those 40 days. And Luke said he was talking to his apostles about the kingdom of God. Now, folks, I don't know about you, but if someone told me I had 40 days left, I think I would be spending it with the most important people on earth to me. And I think I would be spending it talking to them about the most important things to me. And if Jesus spent his last 40 days talking about the kingdom of God to his apostles, that tells me that was the most important thing on the heart of Jesus, was the kingdom of God. And folks, our Bible classes and our worship times help us to remain kingdom centric to keep focused on the kingdom of God and our place in that kingdom lastly it is what Jesus was about from an early age in Luke chapter 2 you remember when he and his family went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover Family gets down the road, realizes they have that Jesus is not in their company. Joseph and Mary go back and look for him. And in verse 46, Luke says, After three days they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, and asking questions. Now, I don't know about you, but that sounds kind of like a Bible class to me. And, you know, I don't think they were talking about the weather. I don't think they were talking about agriculture. I think they had the Old Testament scrolls out in front of them. And they were having a good, good Bible study there for three days. Now I want to spend a little time talking to parents. So if you're not a parent, you can, you can tune me out for a minute. But to parents, I want, I want you to know this. Children, no. You cannot fool your children. They will know what is important to you and what is not important to you. I also want you to know that missing Bible classes and worship opportunities can have a short-term and a long-term effect on your children. A lot of our Bible classes are set up to take you through the Bible, and there's a chronology there. And short term is, if your child misses, they've missed part of the chronology. They missed out on it. But I also want you to know that it can have a long-term spiritual impact on your children as well. I also want you to think about the fact that consistent participation in our Bible classes by your children allows you as a parent to leave no regret. What we're going to talk about next is kind of hard, but I think we need to talk about it. Because, folks, it's no secret that we are losing our children in much larger numbers than we should ever be. And as a parent, what I've learned is you do the best you can. You provide them with every spiritual opportunity you possibly can. And you pray a lot. And folks, when as parents we've done everything we can do, it's still no guarantee that our children will have the spiritual foundation that we want them to have.
But what I want our parents to know is that there should be none of us who when our children are grown and they start out on their own in their spiritual lives and they go astray, they don't have the spiritual foundation we wish they had. I hope there's not a parent here who looks back with regret and says, I wish I'd had them in Bible class. I wish I had given them those opportunities. And lastly, I would give you one suggestion, parents, and that is make a one-time decision. You know, it is so easy if we decide every Wednesday night whether we're going to go to Bible class or not or whether we're going to come back on Sunday night. We're going to decide that Sunday afternoon whether we're going to do that or not. That's a great way not to be here. Folks, the way it happens is you make a one-time decision and that says we will be in Bible class and we will be at every worship assembly we can possibly be involved in. Just as Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Parents, you have to say, as for my family, we will be there. So the question is, comes back to us, Are you all in? And maybe the question that comes back is, why should I be? Why should I be all in? The answer is pretty simple. We have a Savior. He gave his life for us. And all we have to give him is ourselves. And folks, I want you to know, Jesus did not come to this earth and die so that we could have Bible classes. He didn't even come to this earth and die so that we could meet here on Sunday mornings and worship and Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. He came to this earth and died so that we could be his children. So that we could be like him. Peter says that he has given us his great and precious promises so that we could participate in his nature, in the divine nature. You know, I don't I don't know how as parents, we would expect our children to latch on to our values if we never spent time with them, if we never got to be around them, if we never got to talk to them, if we never got to instill in them the things that are of vital importance to me. And the same holds true for us as God's children. We have to take advantage of the opportunities that are afforded to us. I haven't done this much lately, but back in my younger days, whenever someone would be immersed into Christ, I'd sit down and write them a note, write them a letter. And one of the things that I always wrote to them was, Take advantage of every opportunity you have to be in every Bible class you can be in, to listen to every sermon you can listen to, to worship every time you can possibly worship. Because in so doing, you are building up a barrier between yourself and the evil one.
Folks, God has put us together for a reason. He has put us together in a community of believers in a fellowship so that we can help each other get to heaven. Are you all in? Are you, are you really a disciple of Jesus Christ? That's what it comes down to. Am I willing to follow him, willing to learn as much as I can learn about him, to grow as quickly and as fully as, and as completely in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ as I possibly can? If you have a need this morning to make a decision to be all in for the one who is all in for you, would you come as we stand and sing?